Hi, I'm Cornel, and I'll be speaking about the different types of data you need to collect before submitting your RNA seq reads to a repository. In this RDM byte, you will learn what information you need to supply when submitting your RNA seq data. We will discuss the MinSeq data standards and apply them to an existing dataset. What data do we need to provide when we are submitting RNA sequencing reads? The short answer is everything a user needs for the dataset to make sense and be reproducible without referring to an associated paper. To outline a more formal set of rules to which RNA-seq metadata needs to adhere, the minimal information about the High Throughput Nucleotide Sequencing Experiment, or MinSeq guidelines, were introduced in 2008 as a logical extension of the guidelines to next-generation sequencing technologies used for transcriptome analysis. A similar set of guidelines called Minimal Information About a Microarray Experiment, or MIAMI, are available for microarray data. Although we discuss MinC guidelines with data submission in mind, it is recommended to collect this data before and during the experimental phase, as this will give you a good personal record of the metadata and it will facilitate later data submission. Note that most READS archives expect that your data adheres to MinC standards. We will go over the different aspects of the MINSI guidelines using data from this paper as an example. In this paper, the authors have studied the differences in transcription in fruit fly brains fed on different diets. We will apply the MINSI guidelines to this dataset and evaluate if this gives us enough information to reproduce the experiment. There are five elements to the MINSI guidelines. Three of these elements are concerned with metadata and two elements describe the actual data files to be submitted. In this RDM byte, we will focus on the three metadata-related elements. In general, these are general information about the experiment and sample data relationships, the description of biological system, sample, and the experimental variables being studied, essential experimental and data processing protocols. We will describe them in more detail and apply them to the sample dataset in the following slides. First, let's look at the general information about the experiment and sample data relationships. This should include a summary of the experiments and its goals. Our example dataset aims to study the transcriptional response of the Drosophila melogaster brain to sugar and complete starvation by generating RNA-seq libraries from brains of five-day-old mated adult male flies maintained on different feeding regimes. The sequencing data is used to identify differentially expressed genes in the brain of sugar and complete starvation. This description will give a quick overview of the aim of the study and the methods used without going into technical details. We also should provide contact information of the person responsible for this data. Next, we provide a reference of the publication in which this dataset has been published, if any. Lastly, we provide a table that specifies which data file corresponds to which sample. In our example, we have three experimental conditions with four replicates each. And as the libraries have been paired and sequenced, we have two data files per condition and per replicate. The second element involves the description of the biological system, the samples, and the experimental variables being studied. Several of these descriptions will be common to all conditions. For example, the species that we are studying is Drosophila melanogaster. We have used mated adult males that are four or five days old. We have collected brain tissue to study the effects of starvation. You may have noticed that we use ontology terms to describe our samples in an unambiguous way. If you want to learn more about ontologies, please watch the RDM bytes covering this topic. You can find the links in the description. Not all descriptions of the samples will have appropriate published ontology terms associated with them. In this case, we will use normal descriptions. For example, there is no published ontology term for how the flies were reared. Next to the descriptions that are common between all samples, there will be sample-specific information. In this example, the composition of the diet is different between the different samples. 
The third element of the MINSI guidelines deals with essential experimental and data processing protocols. Applied to our example, we provide information on RNA extraction, which was performed using a PicoPure RNA isolation kit, on the sequencer used, which was the Illumina HiSeq 2500, on the library prep protocol, we used a NEPNEXT kit for pair dense sequencing, and on data processing protocols, in which we provide details on how we process the data. In conclusion, I hope you are convinced that providing the data as required by the MINSI guidelines will yield a detailed description of your data that should allow anyone to replicate your experiments. If you can, use published ontology terms as this will increase the findability and interoperability of your data, but don't hesitate to use normal descriptions if current ontology terms are not sufficient. By doing this, you will create descriptions for your own record and you will be in a good position to submit your reads to an appropriate database. That concludes our look at the different types of data you need to collect before submitting your RNA secrets to a repository. Take a look at the links associated with this video and links to additional resources for more information, as well as other RDM bytes in this series.